Well, we're back for another... On our front porch. <laughs> another weekend getaway on our front porch. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it snowed last night. And that doesn't scare us away from camping, but the 20 to 40 mile an hour wind gusts did. Yeah, that was kind of discouraging to try to go out and camp. And we didn't want to drive and pull the trailer and go camping. And it was snowing, snowing pretty good yesterday. So we're back on our front porch. We are still planning on going to the same place we were yeah. last time. We'll try again in another couple of weeks and see yep. what the weather does. Let's but see what the weather does. It doesn't seem to be in our favor right now. <laughs> nope. But we're fixing one of Wade's special recipes today, a chicken pot pie. Yep, we figured we're still doing our family favorites. And I don't know if this is a family, well, maybe a family favorite. It's, not it's our old, favorite. Yeah, it's not an old time recipe because we just kind of started doing this a couple of years Eric ago. Eric likes it. Trying to come up with a... a pot pie recipe that's semi homemade and uh, still come out Not pretty good. Not homemade. Well, yeah, for it's the most part. It's got some frozen <laughs> stuff in it, but it's still homemade except for the pie crust because I can't make pie crust with the darn. <laughs> yeah, so. But it is a family favorite. I mean, Eric likes it. Leslie tolerates it, but you and I just absolutely love it. Yeah, this definitely is another one of our favorite comfort foods. And in that's kind of what our series is now anyway yeah. is for the wintertime comfort foods because we don't we usually go out and camp in the middle of summertime and cook this dish. Uh, no, we don't. We're fair weather campers. We don't mind camping when it's cold. Fact is, the coldest we've ever camped was 18 degrees. 18 degrees. That pop up. Yeah, camper. we got that pop up a number of years ago when the kids were a little bitty, and we decided that one way or another we were going to go camping. Well, we just gotten it, so yeah. we wanted to try it. And it out. was Easter weekend, and. Boy, was it, it got, cold. Yeah, it got cold. It was 18 degrees that morning we woke up. And we had the big dog with the little girl. Yep. And the little, no. Big the big dog, dog was with a boy. Yeah. And the little dog with the girl. And you and I tried to stay warm mm. with each Still other. Still got pretty cold. I slept in my stomach. And we didn't even back. have, we didn't have a heater in that camper. So we just kind of bundled up with, we had a stocking hat. We had stocking hats on our head and in bed trying to keep warm. So. Needless to say, we came home the next day. But <laughs> yeah. at any rate. We have camp when it's snow. If it hadn't been so darn windy, we would have yeah. been doing this out camping. So, so we're going to go ahead and get some charcoal started. Uh -huh. And then we're going to, uh, while it's he heating up, we're going to go ahead and set up and start browning our chicken, chicken and then get everything put together. So we'll be right back with the charcoal going. Okay, so now what do we do, dear? Or has been in there a couple minutes, heated up. So if you'll grab me the chicken, and let's grab a spoon, and we're gonna go ahead and add the chicken. Okay. We're gonna get that spread out even, get it started browning up. We're not gonna cook it completely right now. We just wanna kind of get it started good, and then we're gonna make our gravy in here same time. Okay, our chicken has gotten pretty much white. Yep, it looks like it's... So it's looking like it's... Like it's seared. Yeah, it's not pink anymore. So that's basically all we really need to do at this moment. And our charcoal looks like it's ready. So what okay. I'll do is let me get my gloves on. Because it's hot, of course. It's out of the way. I'm going to get a rock out of the way. I'm not going to need it anymore. And jump out our coals, and we're still going to be frying. So we're going to be doing up to drop the coal. Pretty good. All right. Yeah, don't set our new <clears throat> porch on fire. Spread out there, as you can see, we got a nice little thick ring of bed of coals for the bottom. Put that back on here, and. We're going to continue to 
next item is going to be we're going to make our gravy. And I guess that's my job. Yeah, she makes the best gravy. Whether it's sausage gravy for biscuits and gravy or whatever. All right, now we got about a quarter of a cup of oil. Can I Total, sneak in yep. here? Okay, so. And we're going to use a, cup, a quarter of a cup of flour. We're making what's called a roux. You kind of want to cook your flour a little bit, and it looks like maybe we might need a little bit more oil. Just a little bit. You want it not so globby. It's usually one to one ratio, so a quarter of a cup of oil to a quarter of a cup of flour. flour. Okay, now, honey, if you want to come get the salt and pepper. Add a little bit more of that, too. Yep. All right. You always want to season your flour. Always. Season everything at the level, each that's level. That's right. Now, that's probably enough seasoned salt. Ooh, that smells good. More pepper. You know, something we haven't mentioned before that we probably ought to is, you know, your favorite recipe, any favorite recipe, except for ancient food cake and souffles, can be done in a Dutch oven. You don't have to have strictly Dutch oven recipes. Now, there's about a cup of milk in one of these evaporated cans. So we're going to add it. But yeah, anything you cook in your oven or your stove, you can cook in a Dutch oven. With the exception of angel food cakes and souffles. Neither one of them like oil, so. Now we're going to let this cook along a minute. Get our flour well incorporated. And you can use regular milk. Milk, too. But this is shelf stable, so. Yeah, it's good if you're out camping or. Yeah, it is. We're trying to stay with camping. Now. I kind of want to get this to boil in just a little bit. That's about a cup of milk, right at it, give or take. And to that, we're going to add two cups of chicken stock. Or somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. Just like any gravy, we don't want to know, you don't know for sure how you much you're going to need. You don't want it drier than a popcorn fart, you know. You want it to have a little juice to it but not too juicy either. yeah kind of a thin gravy is because the time we get everything done and it bakes well we're putting taters in here too and that'll yeah. make it a little thicker too yeah so, so we're we want a fairly thin thin gravy yeah so we may not need all two cups we're just kind of see when it gets going now one thing about gravy any type, whether you're making a white sauce or biscuit and gravy, the gravy you got to stir until it sets up or it'll scorch on the bottom. And low heat, not high heat. You got plenty of time to make gravy or you don't need to be making none at all. And of course, until it comes to a boil, it's not gonna be thick. No, it's still pretty thin. Yeah, it'll thicken up here. Oh yeah. Gravy's easy to make. And those of you that don't think it, don't think you can make gravy, I care to differ with you. It's not like me and pie crust. And like I always do when I'm doing it, if you're scared of getting it too runny, you can start a little less than say, oh, I know I'm gonna need at least two cups of milk. We'll start with, you know, a cup, cup and a half, and then as it thickens, just keep adding more liquid. It doesn't hurt anything, does it? Uh-uh, nope. And the ratio is, you know, all right, we put about a quarter of a cup of oil in here, about a quarter of a cup of flour, tea, uh, salt and pepper to taste, and that usually will get you maybe one and a half to two cups of gravy. Or white sauce. This is also how you make your white sauce. Well, it sounded kind of rough out here just a minute ago. Um, but oh, well, it was trees falling way over there, but I think it's someone not was because of ice, that's for <laughs> sure. Was that was so the last video. Cut down a tree, yeah. Yeah, probably from damage from that. Well, honey, this looks like it's about ready, so why Looking don't you good. add what you want to on? Okay. It overly thick. 
Get a little footage up here close. It's fairly, uh, it's just like a thin, a it's thin, thin gravy. It's thin gravy, yeah, because yeah. it'll get thicker as you cook it. Yeah. Okay, so let's go over here. We're going to add a pound of carrots. Here, you want me to do it? Yep, she's going to get a pound of carrots. So I'll get some potato. I'm going to mix those in. Got a pound of peas and carrots. Whatever, 12 ounces, what? Yeah, yeah, it's 12 ounces. Now, if you can put whatever you want in this, it doesn't have to be peas and carrots. You can get mixed vegetables, and we've you done it with different ones. You can even use canned vegetables. We, the peas and the carrots are easy for our daughter to pick out because she don't like vegetables. Okay, now we're gonna add what about half of this, dear? Yeah, so what two pound bag? Yeah, and all this is is hash brown. You can buy the ones with the the onions and the peppers in there but like i said leslie don't really like those only adding about half a bag and you know really this is a very easy recipe now you may wonder why we don't put pie crust on the bottom because we're not we're going to put a pie crust right on top of this when you think about it after you've eaten it the first time that bottom pie crust sometimes can get kind of soggy. Yeah, kind of globby. And, yeah. And so, the nice thing is with on top, like we talked about before we put it all on top, is we've already got the Dutch oven. It's all heated up. We're using it already. It's already dirty. And we just put pie crust on top and it works good that way. Okay. Again, I say, I don't make tar crust worth a darn. I have tried. Y'all can give me your recipes if you want to, but on pie crust, I could kill it. Are we going to take both of them, hon? Yeah, we're going to make an extra thick pie crust because okay. we're putting it on top. And we'll serve the same amount of pie crust as we would if we put it on top and the bottom. Now, we'll what are we, where top. are we putting this? You tell me. Well, there, this is... This is a regular pie crust, but if you spread it out flat, it'll pretty much fill the whole top of the Dutch oven. Okay, so just, so you just lay it right, in yep, there? Yep, right in the middle, right on top. See, I told you this is his recipe, not mine. You know, I'm not heavy because I like to cook. I'm heavy because he does. I'll put this oven right on top, pretty simple. Now, we need cut slats in it, don't we? Yeah, we'll have to cut slats in it. I guess we'll use this spoon here. Remember from us baking our apple pie, that's to let steam out so you don't blow your crust. Okay, what we have now is an egg white. Sorry about the smoke, folks. We started more charcoal because this, that looks good enough. And now, let me grab a brush. And we're just going to brush the top of this. Nice little egg wash. And what that's going to do is give us a nice and shiny coating when it bakes. Now you'll notice we took it off of the coals. The reason why is we didn't want our filling to get... Yeah, we didn't want it to burn on the bottom, on the did bottom. we? Because we still had a full bed of coals on the bottom. And... We didn't want to keep cooking too much, so we cooked it a few minutes and pulled it off. All right, there we go. That should be good. Yep. I think the coals are ready. So, we went ahead and uh, going to do a whole new batch of charcoal, basically. Then we're pretty much done, so let me get the Dutch oven over here. And get our coals added. Now we're baking, just like we were if we were doing our breads, so we want quite a bit of heat on top. Everything is pretty much cooked. Chicken was small enough pieces that it's mostly cooked, so it's not going to have to cook a whole lot. So basically, we're going to do one third, two thirds. So we're going to do about 30 pieces, so we're going to put that tin on the bottom and 20 on top. And like baking, like always, 
we're going to put all of our charcoal around the outside. Because no matter how you rotate, you're still going to end up with a hot spot, of course, in the center. We don't want to burn the center of our... Now, how many times are you going to turn this, dear? Well, since everything's pretty much cooked, I think we're going to be pretty good with about a 30-minute cook time just to get that crust done. So probably about every 10 minutes, 30-minute cook time. So I get these around. We're going to do a checkerboard on top and come back in 10 minutes and get these things. And we'll do a rotate since we're browning the crust on top. We're going to do a rotate and keep a nice even cold batter coals and heat distribution so we'll be back in 10 minutes all right it's been 10 minutes and i went ahead and i didn't get that on the footage but i went ahead and put the wind guard around because it had a little bit of a breeze and it's pretty cool out there so i wanted to keep as much even heat around the dutch oven as possible so just like we bake when we normally do all of our baking we're going to go ahead and rotate our dutch oven about a third of a turn one way and the lid a third of a turn in the opposite direction. All right. Ten more minutes and we'll rotate it again. Well, honey, it's time to check and see if it's done. Let's do it. Turn guard off. A little leopard. Well, not quite. A little more brown. It needs it? to be a little bit browner, yep. All right. Well, close, though. we'll show you what it looks like when it's done but like we always want to say this is the end of our weekend getaway we didn't get a getaway again but we had a fall favorite in pot pie that's right good another good comfort food recipe we hope you all enjoyed this uh recipe and uh, we're sure gonna enjoy it for our supper and if you enjoyed it please like subscribe and share and I tell you what, what are your family favorites? You know, what are your comfort foods in the wintertime? Why don't you give us a comment or two on that? We sure love to hear from you. All right. And like I said earlier, anything you cook in your stove or your oven, you could cook in a Dutch oven. That's right. Yep. All right. Thank you for watching. Bye. It took a total of about 40 minutes to get our crust done on the top of our pot pie.